In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating the changes I've made to my anime style FX workflow, and I will be briefly discussing my plans for the future of this channel. And uh, apologies for my voice in this video. I've been sick the past two, three weeks, and my voice is really strained, and I'm a bit like uh, congested still. But I've uh, put off uh, making this video for too long, so I'm just going to have to power through it. For this video, I'm going to be using Blender 2.8, but all of these updates and changes do work in 2.79. Okay, so uh, right here I have uh, the basics of the workflow set up on just a single object. It's a uh, icosphere with about six levels of subdivision. I got two uh, vertex group textures added in, one uh, just the main displacement, and then one that is uh, a bit higher detail. Man, it's running real slow. All right, and um, adding in the high detail one uh, vertex group to the, our, the main displacement vertex group. And here I'll, I'll add in actual displacement. So there you go. So that's the basics of it. Um, or that this is how it was originally set up basically. Then we had a vertex weight edit set to the uh, main vertex group with remove threshold to control this uh, uh, the, the layering effect and uh, so the first update is that we no longer need this vertex weight edit modifier we can actually remove that because now the mask modifier itself has uh, the threshold value placed into it So this is a pretty cool update uh, that it just helps uh, keep our modifier stack as uh, compact as possible because I mean it gets pretty big with this workflow. And a big thank you to at ktakahiro1729 on Twitter. They are the one that, that actually submitted this patch into Blender itself. They uh, referenced my previous video when submitting the patch which is awesome. Uh, just big thank you for that. It's uh, it's great to see that kind of uh, development happening. All right, so the next update that I'm going to show is a way to add uh, the back face culling line work method to this uh, workflow. So <clears throat> the normal way you would do this is you add a solidify modifier set it to a negative, flip the normals, and set it to um, uh, a different material. The problem is that since this mesh isn't uh, a solid, uh, non-manifold mesh, it doesn't work. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to add two solidify modifiers. If we, uh, So the first one we keep it pretty thin. Uh, don't flip normals. This just uh, gives it thickness so that when we add a second uh, solidify modifier, there is uh, it, it can be set up correctly to create this back face culling method. And if you're not familiar with that, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on uh, covering this in more detail pretty soon. Uh, but it's a pretty common method for adding uh, uh, line work to mesh objects. So when you go into render mode, you can see you get this outline. That's pretty nice. Just set it to a negative value, flip the normals, and offset the material. And, with, and make sure that you have back face cooling on in the shading and you can get this uh, nice li nice looking line work. Keep it pretty low. Keep the 
thickness nice and low so it's there you go that looks pretty good so it's a quick way to add it you just have to add uh, two solidify modifiers as opposed to the normal where you add one <clears throat> and if you also if you were wanting to uh, get line work with this you could also use freestyle um, you just have to uh, check the border option and that will make sure every border edge which is an edge that does that only has one face or no faces connected to it it'll render that as a line so that's way uh, that's two ways that you can go about adding line work to this method or to this workflow and they both work good uh, just whichever one you prefer And the last update uh, that we have to this workflow is um, uh, another way of uh, adding geometry uh, to the mesh. Because uh, the and the previous tutorial, what we did was we added uh, subsurf modifiers uh, and increased the levels of the subsurf in order to create more detail. Because the it's the amount of detail that you can get on these edges is uh, entirely based on how um, how much geometry is there. So by adding more subserve, by adding more geometry, you can increase the amount of detail that you're that you get. So um, instead of using a subserve modifier, I found that using a bevel modifier actually works really well and gives you more control. Like uh, if you let's. Mm, let's put it after the displace modifiers so uh, we want to put it after the displace modifiers and before the high detail add or actually we need to put it before the high detail texture and I also want to add in a smooth modifier so that it, it can smooth out the beveling just to make it a little bit nicer so the reason I'm using uh, the reason I am using bevel instead of subsurf is with uh, bevel you can increase the segment and you have a finer control over the amount of detail. So you can you can like uh, fine tune it or you can add geometry but not too much geometry. Whereas with subsurf when every level of subsurf that you add on is adding more and more it's like exponentially adding geometry but with bevel you can keep it uh, more controllable and uh, you can do that with the segments just keep on clamp overlap and the width really doesn't matter because it'll just clamp it to whatever it needs to be you just uh, control it with the segments adding more segments adds more detail so I'm gonna turn off the displace modifiers for right now just so we can see it clear what's happening so that's with bevel that's without you can see it's adding a lot more detail to the edges because uh, with the high detail text happening after the bevel it has more geometry to add in the detail that it's trying to add in <clears throat> so that's a that's a real that's a, just a better way to add detail than subsurf but we can actually take it even farther what we can do is we have I have a, another vertex group added in called bevel mask make sure everything's assigned to it at a weight of one and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn this down for right now is I'm going to add in vertex weight mix move that up to before the bevel modifier and oh, after the main display so it's going to be bevel mask as vertex group a main display of ver vertex group b and it's going to be set to difference and mix set to all so if we go into weight paint mode we can see main displays uh, the higher weights are getting maxed out but if we go to bevel mask it's now the inverse of the main displays
this then. Wait, um, let's see. Oh, okay. Um, actually, oh, instead of difference, I'm going to set it to replace. Because we want the edges of the masks to be higher weights than the outer, uh, the, the non edges of the masks. So yeah, so we want these the higher weights towards the mask, and that's what we're getting. So then I'm gonna name this bevel copy. And I'm gonna duplicate it and switch both vertex groups to bevel mask, and I'm gonna set it to add. And it's gonna be bevel add. And then in between this, we want to add a vertex weight edit. And this is going to be bevel threshold. And we're going to set it to bevel mask and we're going to turn on remove, uh, group remove and raise the threshold. So you can see what we're getting is what's happening is we're copying the main displacement. We're then removing anything below the uh, threshold and then we're adding it back onto itself. That's just gonna like raise it up, basically turn everything that's assigned to it to like a level of uh, one. And you'll see the reason why in just a moment. I'm gonna turn on wireframe so we can see what's happening. Right now the bevel is beveling everything indiscriminately and we just really want the beveling to happen at these edges but we don't want any beveling out here. Like we don't need any beveling out in these areas. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a limit method on the bevel modifier to vertex group and we're gonna set it to that bevel mask. And as you can see, the, these areas are no longer being beveled. So we're not increasing the geometry uniformly because we don't need any more geometry out here. If I turn wireframe back off, you can see. Uh, turn up the segments. We still get the amount of geometry that we want at the edges, but not out here. And if we compare the the vertices counts, right now with three segments and the bevel mass set, it's at seventy thousand vertices. If we set no limit it's at 208,000. So we're saving, we're cutting the geometry amount more than half of what it was. So yeah, we have the, we not, we're now limiting the amount, or we're controlling where it goes, how incre uh, like maximizing the amount of detail that we want. So this is really good at uh, basically, uh, getting the best of both worlds essentially because like uh when we're when you're animating this what you can do is you can turn the bevel off and you can just have like this really basic masking going on and then when it comes time to maybe uh preview the full effect you can turn bevel on and increase the amount of segments or when you're about to render increase the amount of segments so you animate with the lower res version just to get the overall shape right and then you turn the bevel on when you need to get into those details. And uh, what you want to do is um, turn the beveling down real quick. You can see that as you as the mask gets bigger it's not bevel the bevel is not keeping up with it so you gotta essentially like whatever the threshold is for the mask you want to offset the bevel threshold so like say 0.5 for the mask threshold i'm gonna offset the bevel threshold by 0.2 or 0.1 just uh, just enough so that it's beveling beyond what is being masked. You can even go say 0.25 and 
and yeah, you, so you can see that the beveling's going far enough that it is getting past the mask that that it's uh, adding the detail that we need to. So uh, when you're setting up a, a driver for this mask threshold, you would just create the same driver on this uh, bevel threshold, but offset it by like 0 0.2, 0 0.25, something like that. So that is uh, the updates that I have for now. And that is the end of the updates for this workflow, at least for the time being. I've been asked about it before, but I do have plans to create a uh, course around this workflow, and around creating anime style FX in Blender uh, specifically. The course will be much more in depth than what I can cover in like a single YouTube video. It'll dive into like every aspect of this workflow and it will go beyond just the technical breakdown of how to, everything is set up and it'll go into actually creating effects with this so how to animate with it and how to create different effects uh and beyond just the explosions and everything that i've been showing thus far so if that is something that you're interested in uh look forward to a more formal announcement video on that in the uh in the coming weeks And I plan to get on to a more consistent upload schedule on this channel. I have some ideas for other tutorials, not specifically uh, FX related, but it will still be anime, NPR, production type of uh, tutorials. Uh, they will be covering uh, a wide variety of topics from like characters and line work and environment renders, stuff like that. So there will be a, a, a wider scope of tutorials coming out soon I, and hopefully much more consistently as well as more videos on the channel there will be some new add-ons uh, the anime FX add-on is still something I'm working on but there's also another add-on that I've been working on the past few weeks um, I, I will have a video on that announcing it and the next week most likely really excited for that one because i think it'll be really cool i think a lot of people will like that one uh so if any anything i'm doing uh interests you uh make sure to follow along uh, subscribe and all that stuff because i'm pretty excited for what i'm working on and uh, excited to share it for sure so uh, thank you for watching the video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.